Hangzhou City. Um, oh. Yeah. It's a small city, I bet. Oh, well, <laughs> you'll, you'll see. <laughs> oh, nine Hangzhou million. Is, um, oh. Near the southeastern coast of the Chinese mainland, on the southern branch of the Yangtze River Delta, on the west end of the Hangzhou Bay, as you can see from the picture. Uh, with the huge land area covering over 16,000 square meters, Hangzhou is the sixth biggest metropolitan circle in the world and has a population of almost 9 million permanent residents. The city is the capital of Zhejiang, Zhejiang province and and dignified city in the world. Okay. Today, um, Hangzhou retains its, its status and as it is easily accessible from Shanghai, Shanghai is just a few hours by train away from Hangzhou. It regularly attracts huge amounts of both Chinese and Western tourists. It became immensely wealthy, being at the center of a fertile rice growing area, as well as being the site of the most important silk industries in China. It also was famous as a center of culture, producing numerous writers, painters, poets, and models. Hangzhou has a wide variety of desirable locations to visit and is a popular travel destination throughout the year. One of the most widely recognized landmarks in the city is the West Lake, as you can see from the picture, the left one. Uh, lying in the west of Hangzhou City, West Lake is one of the best known scenic spots in China. It is considered as paradise on earth. In 2008, it was ranked as a 5 a scenic area by National Tourism Administration, which is the top in China. Um, these are some words composed by the famous Song Dynasty poet Su Dongpo. In his poem, he compared the West Lake to Xi's one of the four beauties in ancient China. These poetic sentiments depict the charm of the lake, which has always been a beautiful and from the right picture. The bridge is located in the east of Bai Causeway, a site near West Lake. Standing on the bridgehead, you can see the panoramic view of the distant mountains and the nearby water. It's the best place to appreciate the snow scenery of West Um, Next, I want to introduce another famous attraction, Ling Temple. You can find Ling Temple in a long, narrow valley between Feilai Feng and North Peak to the northwest of the West Lake in Hangzhou. It is without doubt a premier showcase in the West Lake environs and is section as a key provincial historical and cultural site and is considered a leading center for research relative to Chinese Buddhist culture. The presence of a temple on the site can be tracked, can be traced back to the Eastern Jing Dynasty, which is 317-2420 AD. According to a local legend, Huili, an Indian monk, came to the area where he was inspired by the spiritual nature of the scenery to be found there. To his mind, this has of the soul's retreat. The Chinese name is translated into English as 
either Temple of the Souls Retreat or a Temple of Inspired Seclusion in for the setting has a quiet and beautiful grandeur that encourages a feeling of peace and full contemplation. Um, now I want to introduce um, the Leifeng Pagoda. It's also a famous site. It stands on Leifeng Pagoda. oldest colorful bronze pagoda in China. Uh, standing on the top of pagoda, um, tourists can appreciate the nearby Jinzi Temple, enjoying the landscape of West Lake, and even see the city of Hangzhou from a distance. Um, at dusk, the colorful even, evenly glow and green mountains are mirrored in the rippling lake, forming a picturesque scene renowned as Leifeng Pagoda in Evelyn Glow, one of the top 10 stands of Westlake. And there is a um, famous le legend of Leifeng Pagoda. It is associated with a touching love story between a white neck spirit and a mortal man. Legend have, has it that a white snake and a blue snake took on um, the appearance of beautiful ladies after acquiring the supernatural powers over thousands of years. Fortunately, they met, they met a scholar called Xu Xian on the broken bridge. He lent his umbrella to them. Xu Xian and Bai Su Zhen fell in love with each other at first sight. Soon they were married. However, evil monk Fa Hai imprisoned Xu Xian so as to separate this couple. Bai Su Zhen tried so hard to save her husband by using her power, but all her efforts was, were in vain. Her utmost to improve her supernatural power. Finally, she beat the evil monk Fa Hai tore down the tower and saved Bai Su Zhen and Xu Xian. From then on, Bai Su Zhen and Xu Xian lived together happily. The right picture is an anime um, talking about this legend, which is really touching. Um, okay, now it's, uh, it's my time to talk about food. Um, today I'm gonna introduce Top, the top four famous Hangzhou food to you. Um, the first one is the left picture. The um, name is Westlake Fish in Sweet Sour Sauce. It is known as the most famous fish dish in Hangzhou area. Fish used in the fish In the cuisine. Before the cooking process of the dish, a fresh, alive grass carp should be firstly kept hungry in clear, in clear water for one or two days to rinse well, excreting intestinal sundry and get much free flavor. And then it's cut in half from head to tail, but not separated. Delicately poached and then served ice. Up and topped with a sharp, sweet and sour vinegar based sauce. Fish may taste tender and delicious in this specific dish. Um, the right picture is called Songpo pork. Songpo pork makes good use of pork as the main ingredient. The pork is cut to around two inches square in dimensions, consisting of half fat and half lean meat. The dish is named after a revered poet, calligrapher, and artist in Song Dynasty, Song Dongpo, Dong who is supposed to have invented or at least inspired the dish. As it is made from a snap of pork belly, there is a lot of fat, but it has been cooked for a couple of hours before being served, which in, results in fat sense much of its greasiness. 
The meat is so tender that you can quite easily pry it away in small pieces with just chopsticks. The mouth feel is oily but not greasy with the fragrance of wine. It does not taste as fat as it looks like. For the side, for the side food like plain cooked broccoli and ginger help offset the fat as well. It takes at least four hours to make some pulled pork, during which time it is smeared. In dishes as well. The left picture is called beggar's chicken. Um, it comes from the traditional ways of cooking in Zhejiang province in China. The process involves wrapping the whole spiced chicken in lattice leaves first then encasing it in mud and roasted in open fire. When fully cooked, the mud forms a hard shell around the chicken and cracked open before revealing the deliciously roasted chicken inside, including stuff wrapped in clay and roasted process. It can take about six hours to prepare a single serving. The right picture um, is called stock soup with dried bamboo shoes. The soup is of a strong taste, but not greasy at all. The duck tastes crispy and tender. Ingredients include over a year old duck, Jinghua ham, Tian Mushan bamboo shoes, dried roast chicken feet, fresh reed, scanning, egg, ginger, Shaoxing wine, and chicken powder. Oh, I'm getting stopped talking about this, this, this delicious food. Last but not least, I want to mention the famous street fashion in Hangzhou. As we know, Chinese street fashion style is taking over TikTok among youngsters. Hangzhou is one of the most famous street fashion cities in China because the headquarters of many online clothing stores, Alibaba, is here. Many online influencers moved to Hangzhou for opportunities. This list on YouTube to feel the unique street fashion in China. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, That was an interesting uh, Vivian. Uh, do you want to share something else? Vivian? Is she trying to share something else with us? That was fascinating. I was getting hungry. I got so hungry that I went and got my leftover pizza because I couldn't have any Chinese. So I got my leftover pizza and immediately some leftover pizza while I watched the food. So that was just some delicious uh, stuff we talking about. Vivian, you there? I'm here. Okay. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Fashion. Gotta say. Mary Kay, she get a taste, let you get a taste, do you let it taste? All my friends and I need some music. Here we go, no, no, no. 
Let's show them how we get done. I bought it like a rock star, look like a movie star, play like an all star. How you like that? It looks like uh, Chinese people, they like black color more than anything else. Yeah, I was wondering that too, because I saw some you serious know. hip hop influences. So, you know, there's some serious it, it, it's uh, hip hop influences. Thing, but it's more about black and black and black and black. Yeah, but they have. 
and even you have a poor bandwidth so we are not able to uh, get you what you were trying to say because of the poor bandwidth vivian sorry you, you i said you have a poor bandwidth so we we are not able to understand you can you can you repeat again uh to the stage no no what i'm saying is no, that i think you was making the observation of, about the fact that uh, there was a lot of black in the color and the style of the dress and everything and what they were wearing and i made the observation that there seemed to be a lot of rap influence as well so the music rap also seemed to influence a lot of the fashion yeah uh you want me to explain the fashion to you yes Can yes I... and, and, oh. and why is it black white or black um okay first uh for the fashion for the street fashions uh not, not there's a lot of colors and only just i think uh, uh bandwidth is uh, causing a lot of delay yeah. uh for the black ones cuz i think most people think black means cool right so like wearing all black is like you are really cool yeah you are a really cool person so that's why people may choose black as that, a fashion uh, color uh, there is one question which comes to my mind right now that uh, if black is so cool why girls have those blonde hairs i can't i, I, I have some problem Anki was noticing that the the hair seems that a lot the the black seems to be popular but the women seem to dye their hair a lot so there was a lot of blondes and things of that nature so is that oh. very popular in that area as well Yeah that's very popular in China like I I used to bleach my hair to pink uh blonde gray Uh, but after my hair gets long, I'm gonna dye it to blue or green again. Wow. Like youngsters in China, in Asia, just like to dye our hair. Okay. Yeah, because we have black hair. And like, if we want to match our clothes, like all black suits, like it's better to dye our hair to you know appear another color. Okay. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because like I said, the fashion was really uh, catching, and I was enjoying the music. Now there was the one guy that uh, kind of surprised me because he was acting all super macho, but he was carrying his dog in his like little satchel and yeah, everything. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, that that's the thing in China right now. Like I I I I found a lot of people sharing those uh, Chinese street fashion videos online. Like among, especially among youngsters, and they are like, "Wow, China is developing a great fashion on street." No, is there a certain so, 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 so Chinese they they are bothered about brands or they are bothered about good fashion, so they can buy from a street uh, shop, or they just wanted to buy branded uh, uh, clothes. Vivian, Vivian might have frozen again, but I'm trying to see. Yeah, like she, um, oh, there she goes. Uh, for Chinese youngsters, some like to buy those, uh, buy those brands, luxury stuff. Some like to like to buy those clothes from designers because it's more unique, and if you wear it, it seems more fashionable. And and also, what I've, uh, I mean, what I figured it out uh, when I visit Hong Kong. Lot of Chinese they come to Hong Kong to shop, and also uh, Chinese people they are very fond of Japanese products. Yeah, Japanese I, I, yeah, I like Japanese products as well because they are delicate and small it, and cute. Is it more about the quality, or is it more about uh, the way they uh, they carry the products? Uh, uh, it's to to. Aspects. One is the quality. One is the appearance. The cute appearance. Okay. I think. Yeah. Have you been to Japan? Yeah. Three. 
we have to uh, so mark we have to arrange some uh, good internet to uh, to vivian in la yeah yeah i see that so uh so you said you have been to japan or you haven't been to japan i think you said you've been three times is that what i heard you say uh, no i i went to japan three years ago for traveling yeah, but but, but like Vivian japan. told me often, uh, that uh, she will be investing a lo lot of million dollars in japan when she have those big influencers on instagram she'll go big and then she'll invest uh, money and then she uh, create a brand or some some kind of business in japan oh yeah she's gonna have a business in japan china it'll be all over asia and the united states and all of that we can already see that in her future and everything so i want to know <laughs> has she made one of those TikTok videos herself yet with her own fashions i want to know if she's made one of herself so mark, you don't, uh, so mark you don't know she's a popular star on the internet uh, especially on instagram and TikTok. okay I did not know that. So she is a popular star. I'm glad to know yeah. that. She's a star. Uh, no, I'm. I'm just tr doing my doing the hobbies I like. Like I I'm doing modeling and fashion stuff in my spare time. On we just have to sign a contract with Vivian. Uh, whenever we have a fashion brand on IBM TV, we have to sign a contract, and then uh, Vivian will be the brand ambassador. Right now, she just do the travel show, and she's learning economics. So maybe after the economics, uh, we can uh, work on the some kind of a deal, basically, with women. I'm thinking that she knows those styles so well. I'm thinking we can have like a fashion show on IBM.TV. Yeah, we, we are working on a we are working on a fashion show as well. Uh, it takes a lot of time and effort, and because of the COVID, it's not possible. But we had a word with a lot of fashion designers, especially in India and uh, other parts of the world as well. Uh, and we are we are working on that thing, and that includes a lot of technology as well. Uh, Kimberly knows she's watching us right now. She said hi to Vivian, uh, and uh, that's what we're working on. So hopefully we have a fashion show on IBM TV as soon as the end of December. Cool, that'll be great. Mm. I need some fashion tips because I wear the you know shirts that are only so much in style, and I need to get some more stylish clothes. I do have my suit and a that couple of other things. I mean, I'll tell you something. You have to you have to uh, do an Instagram uh, talk with Vivian. Uh, the consultation charges are five hundred dollars per hour. And then your budget should be thousand dollars, and that's about it. That's she, all I need. Help you, just she'll help you just out. She'll help shop. Yeah, she'll help your shop uh, in, in America using Instagram, and then she'll she'll make you select the clothes, and that's about it. All right, I'll keep that in mind. So she's gonna have me all decked out and looking fashionable yeah. and all of that. I'll try my best to help you. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you can handle it, Vivian. We we'll definitely yeah, hear. Uh, so, so apart from apart from the fashion thing, uh, in India, the there was a trend about uh, black burgers and black pizzas. Is the same trend uh, was there in China? Uh, well, what do you mean, uh, black people in China? So we have a trend in India, Mark. Uh, we are serving a lot of charcoal ice creams and mm -hmm. also black burgers and black pizzas. So black pizzas was not that popular, but black burgers are. And lot, very few people or very few restaurants they serve black burger, but charcoal ice cream, which is a black ice cream, that is also very popular. Mm. Is it popular in uh, China as well, or are you aware of it's popular in China? Um, I think that's what Anki was asking because I'm no. not that. It's popular in India, that I know. I'm not. I'm not sure about uh, uh, China and US, but I'll the black burger. In the meantime. Uh, Vivian will tell us that whether she had black burger earlier. Oh, well, what what is the close name? I didn't hear it very clearly. I'm talking about black burger. Have you have you tried a can, black can burger? Can I type it? Can I type it in the chat? I I don't know. I'll do what that for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I will just open the browser. Um, hold on. JJR. No, yeah, hold on, hold on. I haven't typed anything yet. Asking about. You said it's black burgers and what kind of iced tea? Black ice cream, uh, charcoal. Charcoal iced tea. Charcoal. Black burger. You seen it in Japan? Iced tea. Well, I'll show you a video about a black burger. Just charcoal it. iced tea. And what was the other one? Right here. Black burgers, charcoal iced tea, and there was a third one. Yeah, can you see the screen? Oh yeah. Uh, no, I never heard about it. So I'm like, well, what is that? Like 
but I decided to challenge myself to make it at home using ingredients that don't make your poop green. Happy, delicious Halloween, everyone. Let me first say that this is not something I normally like to cook, but because this particular novelty burger just looks so freaking intense, I decided why not recreate it at home. Now, I'm not a big fan of artificial food coloring, so I use squid ink in this recipe. Don't worry, it doesn't make the burgers taste fishy at all. It just makes it look more like the burger from hell. First, you'll need to make the black brioche burger buns. Combine warm water, some milk, sugar, and active dry yeast. Let it stand for about five minutes. Meanwhile, in another bowl, beat one egg and the squid ink together. You can mix this dough manually, but I got the best results using a stand mixer. So in the mixing bowl, combine the yeast mixture and the egg mixture, along with a little bit of bread flour and all-purpose flour, just to get the dough going. Then add the rest of the flours, along with a little salt, and mix everything together. Now once the dough starts coming together, add the softened butter, and continue kneading on medium for about eight to 10 minutes, and the dough should look really sticky. Then transfer it to a lightly greased bowl, cover it with a clean kitchen towel, and allow the dough to rise in a warm spot. It should take about one to two hours for the dough to double in size. Then on a lightly floured surface, divide the dough into eight equal parts, shape them into balls, and place them on a baking tray lined with parchment paper about two to three inches apart. Cover loosely with a clean kitchen towel and allow them to rise again in a warm place for one to two hours. Place a shallow baking tray with some water on the bottom oven rack and preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Then mix an egg with some water, brush the top of the buns, and sprinkle on some black sesame seeds. Bake them on the middle rack for about 15 minutes and make sure to turn the tray halfway through baking. And here's what they look like. Pretty freaking awesome, right? Now for the black cheese. You can use regular American processed cheese, but why not go all out and make your own black processed cheese? This sounds so bad. <laughs> First, grate a block of mild cheddar cheese. It's best if you don't use the ones that are pre-shredded because they are coated in stuff that I don't even know. So just get the block. Place it in a food processor along with non-fat powdered milk, tapioca flour, and salt. In a saucepan, combine butter, dry white wine, and water, and bring it to a boil. And pour the hot liquid over the cheese a little bit at a time, and this is the time you're going to want to add the squid ink. Continue processing until the cheese is melted and everything is well combined. You may need to scrape down the sides of your processor just to make sure everything gets mixed really well. Pour the mixture into a plastic lined container. Preferably you should do this in one of those disposable loaf pans because you're smaller and you can have like that height to the cheese so you can slice it. And it looks like cheese, but I didn't have one so I used a shallow container. I just cover it up, let it sit in the fridge overnight, then I cut them into fours, stack them up, rewrap them, put it in the freezer, and it solidified into a bigger block that I could easily cut with some dental floss. Make sure you don't use the minted kind. Or else I have like minty, yucky black cheese, as if it wasn't already disgusting. And now for the burger meat. It's best if you use ground beef that's 20% fat. It makes the best burgers ever. And we're going to make the smash burger kind. So take a handful of meat, place it in a cast iron skillet with a little bit of oil, and smash it down with your spatula. The edges will get nice and crispy. This is when you want to add the salt and pepper. Then when the edges are nice and golden brown, flip it over, salt and pepper that side too, and lay on the black cheese. Then cover the pan to let the cheese fully melt. And for the last black element, again, this sounds so bad, bake the black sauce by combining ketchup and some more squid ink. And now to assemble this motherfucking monstrosity of a burger, slice your burger bun in half, lay on your patty with that black cheese, of course that black sauce, lettuce, tomato, and the top of the bun. And there you have it, the black burger.